Good morning and God bless you on this Tuesday of Holy Week. As we think of the events that happened in Jesus' life on this Tuesday, he went back to Jerusalem, back to the temple, and spent the entire day debating his opponents, being attacked, um, them coming in their different factions to trip him up, to try and find some evidence where they could condemn him. And time after time, Jesus refutes them and uses these last opportunities to plead with them that somehow these last words that he speaks and these last public sermons that he gives, there might be some who might listen and some who might come to understand who he really is and what he has really come to do. And so I wanna to read to you today, the, what we, uh, from what we know, this is the last public sermon that Jesus ever preached. And he tells this parable, and I'm gonna read it in full. This is from Matthew 25, beginning in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in all his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before them and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. <clears throat> for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will say to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or give you clothes when you needed clothes? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? The king will reply to them, um, in as much as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing, uh, nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Here ends the scripture reading. So if you think about this, this final sermon that Jesus gives, and it really is a declaration of real, what real righteousness looks like. And so often, as, as you hear so clearly in this parable that Jesus gives, real righteousness is not just living a life where I can check the boxes that I didn't overtly break the Ten Commandments. Okay, I didn't technically commit adultery. I didn't technically murder anyone. I didn't technically lie or slander anyone. I didn't technically covet my neighbor's possessions or my neighbor's uh, relationships. The, I will use the word technically in there because as Jesus has already taught the people, it's not just the outward acts, but it's your, the intentions of your heart and the motivations behind them. And so often, even though we haven't technically sinned in our hearts, we harbor all kinds of sinful thoughts. So that's, that's one problem Jesus had with the people was that they refused to acknowledge their own sin, their own need for grace. 
but real righteousness is never about just not doing bad things. Real righteousness is always about doing what God intended us to do. And that means caring for each other, those we know and those we don't know, the strangers, the prisoners, the sick, the hungry, the naked, the thirsty. And when we do these things, we may not realize it, but Jesus says, you know, in as much as you do it or don't do it to the least of these, you've either done it or not done it to me. Now, I always, when I read this parable, there's a certain part of me that when I take it out of context of the whole Bible, it strikes terror in me because I have in my life, I have fed the hungry, I have clothed the naked, I have visited the sick and imprisoned. But the big question lingers in my heart, but have I done it enough? Have I done it consistently enough? Have I done it enough to make the grade, to make be chosen to go to the sheep on the right rather than the goats on the left? And that's the problem for all of us is we don't really know what the scale is. How many good deeds do we have to do? But this passage reminds us again of what Jesus has been saying. Apart from him, apart from his grace, apart from the cross that Jesus is preparing to take for them, we hear it and we're reminded that apart from those things, we are lost. We are rightfully condemned as sinners. And so however you look at your life, and if you allow this passage, this final sermon of Jesus to be that mirror for your soul, it, it, give, it reminds of you that today is a new day. It's a day to repent. It's a day to turn away from our pride and our selfishness and somehow we, the indifference that we live so much of our lives with and to say, today I'm going to live my eyes with my heart open and my eyes open to see the needs of those around me. And today I'm going to do the best to give hope to those who are hurting and to give comfort to those who are in need and offer grace and mercy to those who maybe don't deserve it. So I ask you today to let these final words of Jesus, this public sermon that he gave in the temple, let it reach your heart. Let it do its work. And where it needs to convict you, allow it to convict you and change you. And where it needs to comfort you that if this is your heart, if this is how you are already living, then you know you are walking in the blessing of the Lord. So God bless you this day. Amen.